Today we're going to follow up on the IKEA Desk Drawer Gaming PC Machine system. <laughs> this PC has been serving me really well for the last two months, except for one small problem. The RTX 2060 in there really struggles with high refresh rate 1440p gaming. So I reached out to EVGA to try and answer the question, how much gaming power can you fit in an IKEA drawer? As you can tell, for today's upgrade, we have a very exciting graphics card. It's an EVGA RTX 2080 Super XC. It's a bit of a mouthful, but it really is a beautiful graphics card. It's got all these little details on the shroud and stuff. Hmm, very nice. Thank you very much, EVGA, for loaning me this card. I think it should work pretty well in this drawer, but we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. First off, before we just willy-nilly drop a bunch more power into this drawer, we need to see thermally how well it copes with the current system. And as you can see, the graphics card is fine, but the CPU is a, is a little bit worrying. It's a Ryzen 7 2700, and I'm actually also planning to upgrade that. I want to drop the most powerful CPU I have, which is a 3700X in there. But yeah, those temperatures are pretty scary. The thing is though, when I tested it two months ago, I don't remember the temperatures being that crazy. So I think it may be due to like mounting pressure or like thermal paste or something. So do you know what? I'm gonna drop the 3700X in anyway and just kind of see what happens. Not only am I gonna drop more power into the drawer, but there are also a couple of small problems with the first version that I wanna address. The first one is dust. Um, it's a drawer, so I can't see into it. I don't really know what the dust situation is gonna look like after two months, um, but yeah, I may have to put like dust filtration in there, uh, but we'll see about that. And then the other thing is I didn't have a Dremel or like a cutting tool, so I don't have proper access to the rear IO of the motherboard, so I wanna fix that as well. So with that, let's have a look at the dust in this PC. And here we have our first look at the PC since I actually installed it a couple months ago. And it looks way better than I was expecting. I mean, there's a little bit of dust on the actual fan blades here. But honestly, I was expecting Tatooine and yeah, it's not that bad. I guess what that shows is that I don't have to worry too much about adding dust filtration in the front in version 2.0. Now it's time to have a look at my new toy. I got a Dremel. So now I've done all of the modifications that I wanted to do to the setup, it's worked flawlessly and considering the fact that there's been pretty much no dust in it, I'm happy just kind of using it the way that it is now, especially now that I've got the rear IO more, more accessible, that's, that's going to help me a lot. Um, but yeah, all I need to do is drop in this beast.
And just like that, we have the awesome PC ready to put back in the drawer. Uh, I've, re I've redone the thermal paste on that cooler. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully the temperatures are going to be a bit better on that 3700X. It's the moment of truth. Will the drawer close? I mean, I actually know that it'll close because that RTX 2060 card was actually slightly higher profile than this. So yeah, it does close. Yay! We have an upgraded IKEA drawer PC system computer machine. I can't wait to see how much extra gaming performance we got. But first, I want to just make sure that we're not going to have spontaneous combustion in there. Uh, so after a fairly extended gaming session, we can see that it's not that bad. We're sitting at about 70 degrees on both the graphics card and the CPU, which for a high performance system in a small form factor case, I actually think is really not that bad. I also decided to run IDA64 and Furmark on the system just you know, so that we get an extreme use case example. It's not very realistic because it is a gaming system. Um, and as you can see, the, the CPU temperatures are, are pretty toasty. But again, I'm not really gonna use it for like 24 seven blender renders or anything like that. So I don't think it's that big a deal. And that brings me very neatly to the gaming performance. How much of a jump did we get going from the old system to the new one? As you can see, the gaming performance is pretty good. Um, we're much closer to an average of 144 frames per second in like newer games. Taking a closer look at Battlefield 5, we're getting about 107 frames per second. That's not bad, um, but it's still not, it's still not 144. <laughs> it is at ultra settings though, so bear that in mind. And I wouldn't play this game at ultra settings. I think high is better, but still, it, we don't even have ray tracing running. Um, but yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna overclock it and see what difference that makes. Because according to a bunch of reviews on the internet, the 2080 Super really shines in memory overclocking. And overclocking the memory on this card is really satisfying because you take the slider and MSI Afterburner and take it to plus 1,100. <laughs> it just feels like this hyperbole to do. And then plus 100 on the core, and then you boot into a game and it just runs. It's pretty crazy. There's a bit of a performance increase, but it's not massive. Although 114 frames per second at ultra settings on a pretty new, beautiful game at 1440p, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, so yeah, we're, we're almost at that high refresh rate 1440p mark. I actually want to do another video where I talk about how demanding high refresh rate 1440p is, because I think people kind of underestimate how difficult it is to get those those uh, frame rates at 1440p. Now on a quick subjective note around how I personally experienced going from the RTX 20 Loser 60 system to the 2080 Superman system, with the RTX 2060 and the Ryzen 7 2700 in there, you could really feel the system struggling with games like Battlefield 5 and Tarkov. Because the average frame rate was at like 70 to 80, it means that any frame rate fluctuation is very obvious on the high refresh rate monitor because that's a range of FPS that you can, you can really feel the difference. With the RTX 2060, you're not really making the most of the high refresh rate of your monitor unless you drop the settings quite aggressively. Whereas with the 2080 Super, because the average frame rate is above 100, which 100 for me is where I kind of stop feeling the difference. It means that it feels significantly smoother on the RTX 2080 system. I also think that the Ryzen 7 3700X was a really important part of the upgrade because I found with uh, high refresh rate gaming with titles like Battlefield 5 and Far Cry 5, they actually become very CPU dependent above like 100 frames per second. Um, lower end CPUs seem to limit those games quite a lot. Th there were quite a few concerns about various aspects of the build in the first video in the comment section, but honestly, the system has been very reliable. And now with the extra power and full access to the rear IO, 
I don't really feel there's anything that I need to fix on it anymore. So dust wise, we didn't really have an issue with it. And uh, as far as power buttons go, I don't have a power button, but someone recommended that I in the BIOS set the motherboard to switch on when it gets AC power. So now all I do to turn it on is just flick the switch where the power supply is plugged in. Uh, so that's been very convenient. Yeah, honestly, the system is one of my favorite systems I've ever built before. I, I really, I really love it. Yeah, so let me know in the comment section below what you think of the system. And that brings me to the end of the video. So let me know what you think of this configuration. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with your friends. Um, follow me on whatever social media you like. I'll have it linked in the description below. And also, uh, I stream on Saturdays at 11 a.m. Pacific time. So go check that out. I'll also have my Twitch account linked in the description. And until the next video, bye-bye.